r slash ask reddit. What did a school teacher say that stuck with you? Have I been respectful to you, me? Well, yep, are you being respectful to me? Simple words. They have guided me so much. Ended every class with your good people. Biology teacher. Pointing at student. Ugly bag of protein. Full of water. My teacher told me that I had a beautiful soul and mind. Which I took as meaning that I was fugly and was being pitied. But later on realized that it was her way of showing me special attention because I was an introverted loner. This reminds me of a science teacher I had who would do a little pre-exam ritual thingy to help ease anxiety and help students focus. She would turn off the lights and have everyone relax and close their eyes. Put their head on their arms on the table etc. And play calming ocean sounds from her computer while walking around the classroom calming taking to us. She basically would start with saying to take deep breaths. Think about your favorite place to relax. And recognize that we are all living. Breathing. Emotional human beings capable of love and care and with hobbies or skills outside of the course we were taking. That the exam was a simple measure to see what you have learned. Not to see how smart you are. Or how good you are with the topic at hand. That the outcome of the test had no impact on who you are as a human and doubtful that it highlights our best skills or areas of expertise. The first time I experienced this. Like any high schooler my initial thought was okay lady, whatever but holy shit did it help. I remember one time in particular when I was struggling with the course and about to take an exam while she did this she stopped and calmly rested her hand on my shoulder for a moment while my head was down and seriously thought I was going to break out crying. I felt like she was in my corner rooting for me at a point where I was struggling and I will never forget it. All through the rest of high school and university I would rethink and try to relive that ritual before exams and it helped me big time. Easily one of the best teachers I have ever had. I know what it is to be young but you don't know what it is to be old. I don't know why and how it came up. But our English teacher asked me if I understand that. It was the first year and I was 10. And I definitely did not understand. But it somehow stuck in my mind as the sound of the sentence. Until I could decipher the memory in retrospect. One day in 7th grade our principal came into the homeroom class and wrote on the board $19.32 in big numbers. He got our attention and announced to the class. This, pointing at the number, is what you are worth. Every day you come to class, the school gets $19.32 from the state for each of you. So if you are sick, you should still come to class, go to the nurse, and get sent home. That way the school will still get its $19.32. That was the day I stopped caring about school. I'm pretty sure he was trying to increase attendance and believed what he said was positive. But when a person you're supposed to respect tells you you're worth less than a $20 bill. I once asked my teacher something about the subject, and she said, I don't know, but I'll do some research and get back to you tomorrow. I'm studying to be a teacher and one my teachers told us there is no shame in admitting to your students that you don't know something. However, you should look it up to answer it next time you see them and be prepared for the next time you get asked that. First day of science class. Many of the topics I will be teaching you this year will likely be proven false throughout your life. I love teachers that are honest with students. Simply saying something like you'll never need to know this but it's part of the exam so we have to is so much more likely to get me to learn something than just saying it's important. Sounds like an ace teacher. Your spoon in a knife block when asked why most of my friends were high achievers and I was only average. Ever tried to eat ice cream with a knife? You're useful in your own way bro keep it up. Edit. Typo. Once you're an adult, you choose your own fate. Your mom won't control you anymore. This came from a 9th grade algebra 1 teacher who took the time to tutor me. My mom was iserent of axing. Cult following nutbag who didn't think school was important because Armageddon is coming. I was terrible at math until I met him. It's been 25 years and I think of this teacher still. I am grateful. Don't talk to mom anymore. She got tired of me asking where Armageddon was. Teachers like marking your homework as much as you like doing homework. Why I don't assign it anymore. More than half the kids don't do it. The rest copy it and about 3 smart kids do it themselves and they don't really need to. 
you have unlimited potential when you know how to find the first step. After many years of pressing through, I feel like this has essentially become my motto. I had only a concept before, but now I have the words. Thank you stranger. Just get a ducking haircut I kept complaining during pay that my hair was in my face. This was one of those teachers that felt more like one of the boys than the teacher. Blew my mind hearing him swear. We had a teacher like that who thought he was one of the boys. He ended up getting an ex-student pregnant once she left. He was in his late 50s while she was 19. I'm FB friends with several of my old teachers. I once wrote about how I had the recurring nightmare of being in my chemistry teacher's class and having to take an exam but not having studied for it. He replied saying that his recurring nightmare is my being in his class. My geometry teacher was super chill. He taught us to play poker and blackjack. On the last day of school he said, remember, if you ever need anything or have any questions while you're at this school, there are about 50 other teachers you should go to before you come to me. Edit. Apparently all Wiles geometry teachers are either hooking up with another teacher or taught you all how to gamble. My geometry teacher was too busy getting poked by my history teacher to care about us. I went from honors to support. He gave me this nickname. My friends still call me behind Joe 15 years later. He said with rage, you used to be one of the good ones. A teacher said this to me, but instead he said with a tinge of sadness. I took Latin all 4 years of high school. I quickly realized I despised the language, but I stuck with it for the teacher himself. He alone was worth it. Our Latin class was right above the hallway with classrooms for special needs kids. One day, after it was apparent nobody did their homework, my teacher stopped class and said, you're all taking what you have for granted, and it's inexcusable. There are several dozen kids in the hallway below you who wish they had the mental faculties to do homework. I did my Latin homework regularly after he said that. Edit. Holy shit this blew up. I deleted reddit for 2 days and came back to over 7k karma. Thank you for the silver, kind stranger. After being caught smoking pot in high school, 1986, my science teacher, hi Mr. Fishbein, said to me, there is a time and place for everything. This is not the time, nor the place. He did not report me to administration. He was a great teacher. In French class in high school, over 20 years ago, Part of the lesson was going over some sentences in French. She pointed one out in particular. I go to school on the bus. My horrible attempt at typing it was something like Jevy Nalakol on booze. I understand I've probably triggered people who speak French. I apologize. I remember vividly the teacher saying, for some reason, this is the only French any of my students ever remember after they're done with this class. Here I am, two plus decades removed from that class in the 90s. And that's the only French I remember. A good mathematician is a lazy mathematician. As the lazier they are the more time and effort they put into finding the easier solution. Had a history teacher who told me that everything is relative. You can only be poor if someone next to you is rich. You're only stupid if someone next to you is smart. It helps to put things into perspective and realize how superficial a lot of things are in life. That being said, he also randomly told me that wolves are badass dogs that don't give a shit when we were not talking about wolves or dogs in class so who knows what was really going on in his head. Don't bullshit the bullshitter, Mr. Bird 2005. One time one of my elective classes was just kind of chilling out the day before winter break and the teacher decided to arrange all our desks in a circle. He had everyone anonymously write something that was troubling them at the moment and he would go through and give some advice. I wrote about my parents constant fighting and how I feared their inevitable divorce and the possibility of moving across country with my mother. I wish I could remember what he said but I vividly remember almost crying because what he said hit so hard but I kept it together. Less than a month later, both things happened Lmao. They may forget what you said, but they will never forget how you made them feel. I had a maths teacher who was an older woman. Really strict and nobody particularly liked her. We mocked her way of speaking and were generally mean teenage a-holes. Once, when I was around 15, I hadn't finished my homework so I dropped my book in a puddle and showed it to her in class to say I'd lost the homework so couldn't hand it in. She questioned me a bit on how it had happened, then asked me to stay after class. 
the whole lesson I was shitting myself, expecting to be absolutely bollocked once everyone else had gone. So when the bell rang I sheepishly went up and sat at her desk after everyone had left. To my surprise, she didn't shout at me but gently asked if I was being bullied and somebody had taken my workbook and ruined it on purpose. I was a little skinny kid with glasses and braces, so I can see why she would have thought that. But in that moment I suddenly saw her as a human being with feelings and empathy and not just a teacher. I felt like shit for the way I had treated her, and for lying about what had happened. I never admitted it to her, just reassured her that I was fine. But it did stick with me and I was much less of a dong to teachers after that. This reminds me of a similar thing that happened to me at around the same age that I still cringe about sometimes. I was several weeks into a course in high school I still hadn't bought the textbook. When the teacher found out I didn't have the book, she took me aside and asked why. Being a dumb teenager, without thinking I gave her some lame excuse about the book being too expensive. My family was solidly middle class, and, although not rich, my parents definitely would have bought the book for me. The real reason was just that I was lazy, but my teacher looked sincerely concerned and quietly handed me a $20 bill. I was caught off guard and mortified, of course. I did buy the book right away after that, and then later that year returned a $20 to the teacher. I always struck by the generosity of a teacher who would do that for her students. But I felt awful about how what I thought was an innocent lie turned out. Definitely a valuable lesson in honesty. LOL. It's okay. You can smile. This was first thing our middle school music teacher, who we all loved, said on his first day back after his wife, an art teacher many of us had in elementary, was killed in a car accident. He made music class a lot of fun, and we'd missed him in the week he took off after his wife's death. He was used to coming into a room full of smiling faces, ready for another fun hour of class. We were all sitting utterly silent, fixed on him with what I'm sure were the most somber little faces he'd ever seen. He smiled at us after he said it, and we all smiled back, and he thanked us for it. What do they call someone who graduated vet school with a 2.0 GPA? Doctor, my first term anatomy professor, in vet school, telling us to stop fretting so much about the grades and worry about the knowledge edit, added clarification about what level of education this advice came from. My anatomy teacher was a cool dude. He'd give us little tidbits of advice before each test, ranging from always put your shopping cart away to you don't have to be 100% okay 100% of the time, and that's 100% okay, 100% of the time. He's definitely one of the best teachers I've had. In my senior year we had a dinner at school. There was a very long queue for the desserts, so I went and asked a history teacher where it started because I couldn't find it, it was pretty chaotic. The teacher proceeded to put an arm around me, walk me to the desserts table, and say Ray my boy, duck the queue. Being wise is better than being smart, I held on to that right up till receiving my PhD. Now that I'm entrenched in the corporate world of merciless exploitation, I've realized being smart about life is really a subset of being wise. I had a 9th grade earth science teacher who actually had a PhD in biology. He told us that he had made his was through school by writing things he had to learn on 3x5 note cards, and would pull them out of his pocket when he had a few minutes to learn memorize the material he had written on them. I used that technique from then on, all the way through my own PhD, when I had something important to understand or commit to memory. In 8th grade, a friend and I used to jokingly sling insults at each other and one day he retorted that I was a cheap horse. Apparently our science teacher overheard and decided to chime in and defend me by shouting you're not cheap in front of the entire class. Apparently someone told the principal and I had to explain that I had no idea what he meant. Nothing had happened. I am absolutely not an 8th grade prostitute, etc. Still have no idea what he meant by it or why he decided to contribute in that way but it was super awkward and it stuck with me. There's no benefit to being right if you can't make people listen to the answer. I had a chemistry teacher in high school who was a bit of a hothead. One day, when two kids were talking in class, he stopped. Everyone expected a quick but firm correction. What we got was so much better. Our teacher stopped and calmly turned towards the class and said do you hear that? He walked towards the window at the back of the class, 
Everyone sat stone quiet. He leaned towards the window do you hear it? Faint laughter. It's 5 million Chinese children laughing quietly because they are taking your jobs. Then he just walked back to the front of the class and started teaching again. No one talked. I love stories but was slow to pick up reading. Once it clicked I was at the top of my class until I graduated high school. I have a BABCM now. In primary school I wanted to go to a book fair called Voices in the Coast. I was shot down instantly. A year before that. Because I was bad at reading spelling was also hard. My 5th grade teacher made everyone stand up depending on what they got right on a spelling test. I was the only one to get all of them wrong. He made me stand in front of the class. If you ever see this. Duck you Mr. Burns from CSS 2003. Still waters run deep. I was extremely antisocial. I had a homeroom teacher. That out of frustration one day. Ranted about how easy school was. He said. We literally give you a book or the text. Tell you to read it. Then ask you to answer questions. The answers to which are found in the book we gave you. It doesn't get any easier than that. Read the damn books. Answer the damn questions. That's all school is. Whoever threw that paper your mom's a hoe. Edit. This blew up way more than I expected. Thanks for the silver and platinum. Funny how it went from me creating an account just to write that down to me getting platinum and shit. This community is awesome. Question everyone and everything. Conduct your own research to find the truth. You're the worst guitarist. I was a beginner at that time. Still hate her. Who says that to a beginner? You'll never achieve anything. And? He didn't. It stuck that much. Huh. First grade. We were doing a math lesson. The lesson was something about drawing a circle around groups of 5 or 10 things in a picture. Then we had to count the number of things in the picture and raise our hand when we were done. I figured out pretty quickly that counting the things one by one took too much time. So I counted by tens, which were already circled, then counted the leftovers and put up my hand. I was done way before anyone else. The teacher looked at me and said something like, There is no way you could have counted them all. So I put my hand down and made sure I was not the first one to put my hand up first during that lesson. A few minutes later she complimented another kid who had counted quickly and said that he was probably counting by fives and demonstrated how to do that. I was so angry and thought it was stupid to count by fives when it's easier to count by tens so why not just do that. The thing is, this woman was usually a pretty good teacher. I don't know if she just didn't like me or was having a rough day or what. But I learned that day that teachers don't know everything and sometimes they're just mean. You can be the smartest person who ever lived and still be wrong. If you want to work at a McDonald's, that's up to you. If you want to work somewhere else, that's also up to you. Said to me after I scored shit on a test he knew I could do better at. I work in the space industry now. Thanks Mr. Teacher. You are a waste of oxygen. Thanks for that. He was the only adult in my life who would tell me I was capable of achieving something. And seemed genuinely proud of me when I got into university. And when I contacted him years later to say I'd got myself a PhD. Just like he told me I could. If you skip school again I'll tell. Name of girl I liked your loser. LOL technically true but it still hurt. Comma. You'd do so much better in life if you gave a duck. Double quote. Said to me by one of the English teachers in my high school a week before I graduated. This was during a conversation about what I wanted to do post high school and I said something along the lines of I don't know. Get a job or something? After years of seeing hearing about my creative writing ability and even showing it during his classes. He'd honestly given up on me. But hey. I'm sure I wasn't the last kid to let him down. Edit. Holy shit. My first gold. Thank you so much. My art teacher told me I couldn't draw. Fast forward 15 years and I've graduated university with a fine art degree and have my own small illustration business as a side gig. It's not a huge thing, but I've had over 150 sales now and had like, actual fans. So, screw you miss H. Edit. Wow thanks for the well wishes everyone and for sharing your own stories. It made my heart happy. I won't share my work on here because I'm going through a rebrand ATM and I try to keep this account anonymous. But thank you for asking.
For those interested the book is illustration workshop by Mary Kate McDenrit. I highly recommend it if you're out of practice or want to look at drawing in different styles. My English teacher always told me I had real potential when I was lacking behind on stuff. Of course because I thought I was useless and bad at everything I never actually tried and scraped by the skin of my teeth. Never believed her until I left school and now I wish I had actually made the effort she encouraged me to make. In religion class, read the Bible as a history lesson and not as dogma, actually made me interested in the Bible. This came from a teacher who hated my guts, and I his. We never got along, I disliked what he taught and how he taught it. He thought I was pompous and bragged about my grades, maybe pompous, but never bragged about my grades. Anyway, we had turned in our ethics final paper, and mine was 20 pages long or so. Sometime later, he asked me to come by his room to pick up my paper. Despite how much he disliked me, he told me, Sam, I've been teaching this class for over 10 years. This is the best paper I have ever read. Can I use this as an example for future classes? I gained a ton of respect for him that day because I knew how hard it had to be for him to admit that. The vast majority of students that think I dislike them are mistaken. Often when a student thinks you don't like them, they act extremely rude. When you are extremely rude to your teachers they will sometimes have a discussion with you about your behavior and how you are being disruptive to the class. Most students take this well, but some take it the wrong way and see the teacher as singling them out. Many students don't seem to realize if you are purposefully being the most difficult kid in the class you are also going to get the most discipline. If a student mistakenly thinks I am against them I always try to have moments like yours where I try and find something the student did really well, and I let them know how proud of that work I am. So far I have managed to get all but one student who thought I disliked them to realize that I don't, even if not all of them change their opinion of me, because the truth is, I don't care if some teenager hates me, doesn't keep me up at night. The reason I work so hard on getting the kids to like me is because they work harder when they do. I'm not going to take it personally if a kid tells me to go duck myself. It's a kid. Sometimes they're dongs. I'm there to make them learn. Long winded way of saying it. But maybe your teacher didn't hate your guts as much as you think. Maybe it just took the whole semester to find that thing to engage with you. Although those are just my random first impressions from reading a comment you wrote. Since I was not there and don't really know anything about your life I would like to apologize if I have grossly misread the situation. Ro, you made it to the end, you're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content more light. It's free and that's a great price.